concludes. <laughs> I've called this talk, Len Lai's Bell Wand, a, a work in progress. Uh, the status of um, a work in progress could equally apply to several of the other sculptures in the exhibition. Uh, rotating harmonic, moon bead and zebra are all works that the foundation has recently reconstructed and are all prototypes, or in a state still have been developed. So they too are works in progress. Works that we are recreating or reconstructing from Len's notes and models and drawings begin as prototypes and remain as works in progress until we're satisfied that we've got them right. Bellwand is the most recent reconstruction and we're still finding out about this work and what Len intended for it. Uh, this is Bellwand's first public appearance and part of the purpose of my talk is to announce its arrival. Although, uh, as you'll come to hear, Bellwand is quite capable of announcing itself. But before I do this, before I talk about uh, Bellwand as a work in progress, it would be useful to see what Len had in mind when he was building these smaller works. I want to show that Bellwand, Moonbead, Firebush and the like are all variations and developments of the principles that come from rotating harmonic. To this extent, rotating harmonic is the genesis of many of Len's ideas, of many of his figures of motion. Furthermore, Len was not satisfied with the scale of these smaller works. He imagined them as much larger, often monumental. He also envisaged them in groups or as multiples, and not just as singular entities. And at a monumental scale, he would cast them as actors in grand outdoor theatres that paid homage to the forces of nature. Now, my title slide was made uh, as a photograph of Len, made in 1962 by photographer Hans Namath. This portrait of Len is one of a series that Namath made of prominent artists in New York at the time, including de Kooning, Tingele, Jasper uh, jo Johns, Mark Rothko, John Cage, and Alexander Calder. And in the background, although maybe it's the foreground, just here, you can see a flexing metal wand. Quite possibly this is rotating harmonic. Harmonic is a very simple and elegant work and it was made by Len in 1959. And here's that original work. From this work, Len discovered two important ideas. And he carried these forward and developed and elaborated upon them. The first is that when a flexible upright rod like that in rotating harmonic is shaken backwards and forwards, it forms patterns in space. At particular speeds, these patterns or harmonics become prominent. Furthermore, at a certain point, the rod, while being shuttled backwards and forwards in a two-dimensional plane, will move out of that plane and start to rotate. It's quite a fascinating phenomenon. 
In other words, the shuttling, the reciprocating backwards and forwards action of the motor will cause the wand to rotate in three-dimensional space. And for this work and others of this size, Len used relatively weak motors. Motors equivalent in power to, say, a sewing machine motor, and not designed to vibrate spring steel rods in space. He noticed that at certain speeds that the energy stored and released by the flexing metal rod would feed back into the motor, causing it to stutter and halter, to slow down and speed up again. Len found in this one work, Rotating Harmonic, that he could spell out the whole business of how energy is absorbed into the carbon steel rod and how that energy, in his words, is harmonised by the springiness of the wand feeding back to the motor. He described what was going on between the rod and the motor as a kind of symbiotic relationship. The motor gave the rod energy, the rod stored it up, and gave it back again. This created a cycle of expanding and contracting like breathing, as if the rod were a living thing. Indeed, he would refer to the dancing rod as an upside-down elliptical fish shape, as if it were feeding on the bottom of the ocean. No doubt there is a, re a relationship between the motor and the springy rod, but it doesn't always seem to be as harmonious as Len has described. Indeed, there are parts of the cycle where the relationship appears to be almost antagonistic. The motor fights to drive the rod, and in turn the rod fights to drive the motor. But however described, it is the characteristics of this relationship that give these works their very particular Len Lai character. A tension between a beautiful formality that describes harmonic motion and a measured degree of unpredictability and chaos. And if we're lucky, here is a movie clip of Rotating Harmonic. And I'd like to thank uh, Tim Grucci for some of the filming he's done of the models in the collection over time, <clears throat> so that we're now um, accumulating a very good moving image record of the works we have stored there.
Um, one of the things that's rather remarkable about when you film the sculptures that they end up looking like the films Len made. And there's, there's a very strong correlation between the images you see there, particularly the close-up of the stripes coming down the film. But in any event, oh, I need to use the microphone. In any event, I, I hope you saw that breathing sensation. This is the original work, which is stored in the archive, and we, uh, the foundation prefers not to uh, exhibit the original works where possible because we're trying to preserve them for as long as we can. So that is one of the reasons we undertake reconstructions of them for exhibition purpose. Len also imagined rotating harmonic ten times as big, forty feet or so high, and as part of a monumental outdoor kinetic experience. And he left drawings, models and notes describing what these experiences might be. And here's one of those drawings. This one is called Gateway Kinetic Complex. And you can see here, Ted. Ted is entering the complex and he's moving, he's walking through a very large universe loop. And he's about to walk down or be transported down a kind of a ski ramp. There are ver various versions of this, and in one case, your feet are clamped into boots and you're transported. <laughs> There's no escaping this. And you'd be transported through a large flip, and you'll see uh, a smaller version of this in what is already a rather large sculpture in Trilogy which is sometimes referred to as a cave in Lenz notes. And here's my cursor. Until you get to this figure at the end, which is a large rotating harmonic. And Ted's friend has already got there, and he says, come on, Ted, it's quite safe. <laughs> but if we look at what F is called here, it's called the Widow's Walk. <laughs> it's possibly not quite as safe as Ted would have us believe. But Len imagined for the simple harmonic, rotating harmonic, that it could be scaled to 40 feet. And at the moment, we have some research undergoing at Canterbury University to do just that. I forgot to show you that you also are transported by razor-sharp twisters, an avenue of razor-sharp twisters. And here is a model of Steel Gateway, sometimes called Universe Walk, or maybe I've conflated two projects into one here, that Len, and here's the model that Len made, and you can see the twist, you can see the large universe, and if I can find the, oh, there it is, here's the large universe where you enter, and just here is a small matchstick figure for scale. You go by an avenue of twisters, here and here, up the ski ramp onto this podium and it's not very visible but here is the large rotating harmonic. Len imagined these in outdoor places like for example here in Death Valley. Another shot of it. He called this, uh, in this particular version, he called 
the rotating harmonic, the mother harmonic, and this was in keeping with some of the uh, terminology he had, some of the names he had for the other pieces, like uh, in these large outdoor complex like Cave Goddess. In uh, 1971, uh, Len put forward a, a design for a competition in the city of Seattle to redesign the plaza there. It was a competition, as you can see, called the Civic Center Fountain Competition. And here is a kind of a, an architect's drawing of that that Len had produced. You'll see in the top, if I can find the cursor again, is an elevation, and here is a large outdoor version of grass, and here is a large version of fountain, and again we see a large monumental version of rotating harmonic. The large outdoor versions of grass, all of these would sit in various ponds of water. Some would have water splashing on them, but none of them actually projected or squirted water but they all made reference to it in some way. The large fountain he called here um, is a fountain called Swain Steel. The large, out, uh, the large version of grass uh, is called fountain grass on this occasion. Some of these would be stationary and others would be motorised to rock gently in space. And the large harmonic that you can see on the left is called Fountain Whirler. So again, it's making reference to the use of water. So it was a, a somewhat natural progression, I suppose, for Len to pump water into the harmonic so that it would squirt out holes along its side and produce patterns in space as well as just those that are already produced by the wand. And this is one of my uh, favourite drawings. And it's a drawing he made for a work that's variously called Water Whirler or Swirler or Whirlpool Swirler. It's a favourite drawing because it's a lovely piece of animation in a sense. But it's also very small. It's made on, I think, the back of a kind of postage stamp and you can see the perforations. It's a favourite for another reason too is that it alludes back to the framing of films and it's as if these are sequences in a film. So the top drawing shows a stationary harmonic, uh, sorry, a stationary pole with water squirting from it. The second drawing shows the lateral mode swaying from side to side and forming the C shape. And you can see that lens indicated how this will occur with the shuttling of, with these arrows here showing the shuttling movement. And down the bottom we get the full swirling with water jetting out. And perhaps at the bottom of that, again, is the whirlpool swirler that he sometimes refers to. To my knowledge, Len never made any models of a harmonic that squirted water, but he left plenty of drawings and notes about what he would like these works to look like. This is the first uh, reconstruction, well it's 
obviously it's not a reconstruction, it's the first full scale work we made from, we have made from his drawings and documents and it's situated on the Wellington waterfront and it was commissioned as you can see in 2004. This is another variation on rotating harmonic. Here we have a simple pole oscillating in space, moving out of its lateral plane and starting to rotate, and at the same time, water streaming from jets along its edges. It's, uh, it's easy to associate the swaying and rotating movements of Water Whirler with the same kinds of movement we find in dance. And Len wanted us to feel the movement of his work in the movements we, uh, the movement of his work in the movements we make with our own bodies. And there's no better way of doing this perhaps than in dance. Len wanted us to dance along with his sculptures. This work, Bell Wand, uh, Len made in about 1965. This is a drawing from that time. And it comprises a motor, which you can see here. a reciprocating mechanism and a belt just in the background here that connects the motor with this piece that goes backwards and forwards. This is the original from the archive. And just above that you can see a plate of steel and I'll refer to that in a moment. A wand and attached to the middle of the wand is a tethered, a smaller tethered bell and this is a bearing that allows that bell to rotate the wand. And on the top are two sleigh bells which Len bolted to the, t uh, to the wand. Bell one jiggles and dances much like Water Whirler. It sways from side to side and then develops a hula motion emphasised by the small bell that orbits the belly of the wand. Added to this is song, or more precisely, a hullabaloo. Len regarded Bell Wand as one of his absolute favourites because it kicked up a kind of double racket. Now, I've always liked those bells, but I feel they're just a little bit too romantic, he said. Decorative, a bit too pleasant. They didn't have enough vehement emphasis or something. So to counteract that sonorous quality of these bells ringing away, you know, we don't want any Crosby dreaming of a white Christmas stuff. So I put in a plate of steel at the base.
Bell wand is an anthropomorphic form of rotating harmonic. The harmonic patterns described by the simple polished rod of the earlier work are now dressed up to represent a human, a more human form. We can see in Belwan's movements a dancing and singing figure. It comes with a voice, a set of bells and a clanging plate, and it comes dressed to dance. Perhaps it's a small tutu hitched on its hips that sways and flings and orbits about. So here are the dance moves. On the left, you have a, what Len called a single harmonic. In the middle, you have a double harmonic. And on the right, you have what Len called swaying. You can imagine all of these as kind of dance moves. And at the same time, the bells are jingling and the clangor is bashing. It's probably no fun dancing alone. So Len imagined that these works could be in groups as well. This is another model from the archive and you can see that it comprises some small wires with they're about a metre long with small bells on the top all anchored to a spoke and that spoke is reciprocated moved backwards and forwards by a motor you can see on a base at the bottom and once again it goes back to those principles of the rotating harmonic where if you shake something in one plane it will excite it into that C-shaped harmonic and then it will start to rotate in space. And here's the work, which dance with a cover on. Len imagined this work as a much larger work, which could be shown indoors, but also outdoors. One dance, uh, as he's written, combines the moving figures created by simple harmonic with the group effect of which dance and the ringings, oh, so, sorry. Let me read this again. One dance uh, combines the moving figures created by simple harmonic and the group effects of which dance and the ringing sounds of bell wand. Each wand would be programmed to be performed individually or as a group. As Len notes, 
now we quote him, the dance action would consist of swaying and various stages of harmonic curves and, the individ and as individual sequential motion characterized <coughs> characteristics of each of the wands would be programmed alone, severally or in unison. Lai's drawing of wand dance shows the wands oscillating and orbiting in the second harmonic. In a breeze, the wands would oscillate or sway simply from side to side in the first harmonic, and the bells would gently tingle. And we have plans for this work. And bigger still, Len imagined that larger versions of his work, like Blade, and in this case, Bell Wand, could be used as a kind of carillion, a kind of clock. This work would have 78 or so wands. He's called it Time Dance or Bell Dance Wands would have 78 wands, each about 20 feet or so high, and, pro and programmed to announce the hour. This whole assemblage, and this is a kind of plan view you see here, would be about 200 or so feet across. I think this talk is also a work in progress and I wasn't quite sure where I was going to go with it. I thought at first it might be useful to tell you about the development that the Foundation is making with Bellwand and I'm happy to do that but we could leave that to part of the discussion there and you might like to ask me some questions about that. And I'd rather leave the last words to Len. So this is a clip that was made, that's taken from a documentary out of the 60s that included Len and other prominent artists in New York at the time and in the States. What I like about it though, is he's sitting in his studio. It's, it's a bit like this exhibition here. He's sitting in his studio. He's surrounded by these wonderful works. He's got, a, he's got both hands on the controls. He's got them all going at once. It's a carnival. It's a celebration of exactly what he's about. You can enjoy that in the exhibition here and you can see a, a snippet of it in Len's studio. Before I show you this though, I need to, uh, I'd just like to um, publicly acknowledge, because this may be the only opportunity I have to do that, I'd like to publicly acknowledge um, <coughs> how grateful I am to have had the opportunity to have worked with Tyler Can over the last few years and his role as curator of the Len Lake uh, collection here at this gallery. And I wish him well in his new role in Birmingham. Here's Len in his studio. You, you will see a snippet of Belmont. Storm King is going to hang 
on the outside of a barn in the country and be programmed for evening <laughs> or at any time you want to get a hypnotic effect of great energy, the sound of a storm. That's why it's called storm king. Here is some of the sound it makes. <laughs> 